Well, hola, I'm Susana Tumpkin. So happy to be here with Jorge Perez. Hola. Hola, hello, how are you? Happy to be with you. Yes, well, we're so happy to uh, be together, I guess in air quotes, for this um, collective conversation with El Museo del Barrio, which is part of our um, Dialogos uh, programming with Freeze Art Fair. So, so grateful that you could, could be here with us, Miami to New York. <laughs> yes, it's, um, it's been quite an ordeal this past two months. Yes. I thought actually maybe that's a good place for us to get started because um, I'm really curious to, to ask you if you think this moment of quarantine might change um, collecting in general or even how you're starting to think about collecting? Yes, I think it's gonna have a deep impact on, on collecting. Um, these last, um, whatever the time I is, six weeks, eight weeks that I've been in the house, um, except for my walks and my visit to, to construction sites, um, have uh, allowed me uh, to put a lot of emphasis on rethinking a lot of, um, of, my, of my collecting and also the way I look at art. So yesterday, for example, we had a fabulous studio visit uh, with William Kentridge. Um, it was uh, in that one, I think it was six of us, and we spent two hours in his, in his studio asking questions, talking, looking at his new things, asking about the politics of South Africa. And then I came back in the afternoon and I had one in New York with Angel Otero, um, a Puerto Rican artist, of course, that is now working up in upstate New York, but usually is in Brooklyn. Both of these artists are friends. And without having to go to their studios, these were very intimate conversations that allowed me um, on, on, a, on a very personal basis to, to look at what they're doing, discuss what they're doing, um, and actually both were with a group of uh, six, seven, or eight collectors, uh, all of them asking what I thought were very edifying questions, which I think is going uh, to have an effect on the way we look at artists, we look at galleries. It has definitely speeded up the technology um, mm -hmm. that galleries, fairs, and museums are using to reach uh, the collectors. Uh, we are seeing a lot more purchases, uh, and I've been talking to the auction houses, um, from online uh, sales uh, since they have been now turning totally, you know, from their contemporary auctions to what they call sort of mini auctions, less, you know, uh, and they give you a lot of time to look at them before. And for particularly for artists that you already know, um, this provides a good way of uh, continuing to look at the products out there in the market. So I think technology and office and home visits to artists, galleries, works, fairs, will become much more prominent. I think the speeding up of technology um, becomes, um, m has accelerated hugely. Um, museums, for example, and you know, I'm particularly close, of course, with uh, Pam, you know, the press one in Miami, but also uh, Reina Sofia and, and, and Tate uh, in London, um, they're doing incredible things with allowing um, their viewers, you know, um, to see um, their collections, their artists, their talks. Um, so, yes, so I, I think um, this is going to have a deep effect on the way we collect and the places that we need to go in order to collect. So, Kentridge was in South Africa. We have been building a South African and African contemporary collection very strongly. I've gone to South Africa four times in the last year. Um, and this allowed me uh, to, to do some things without going to South Africa. Right, you can uh, forego the, the jet lag now. <laughs> right, we did the same thing um, with um, three other other than Kentridge, three other 
one Zimbabwe, two South African artists, um, which was great for me to see what they're doing um, and, and keeping in touch. Yeah. I mean, I mentioned jet lag. Maybe we're having Zoom fatigue instead, but it's true. I mean, we can be all over not only the country, but all over the world. And I think it's allowing us to be a little bit less precious, too, and to be more comfortable with this kind of intimacy that you were mentioning. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm in a T-shirt. I don't have to dress up. I'm comfortable, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. My only fear so, so is that I don't want it to supplant the actual physical act of looking at the art. Um, and, and I was a little afraid that the technology might become so good that people reduce their going to museums and going to see the artists, meeting them live and going to see the artwork, seeing them live, because there's nothing like the experience of seeing the art in person. It's true. That's so this could sort of be... This, this should sort of be the appetizer for, for the collector. The main meal still needs to be uh, going, seeing, and touching it, et cetera. Well, I'm curious too. I mean, since we are sort of in your living room, can you tell us a little bit about what we're seeing behind you, any of the pieces? I know you live with your collection. Yeah. We, you know, um, again, this is, if you, if you look at it all around, um, it's very South African right now, um, influenced. We have, um, uh, Poynton, which is a fabulous, uh, painter, he, um, a fabulous, uh, woman, uh, painter from, in, from South Africa. Um, you can't see it. It's on this, a huge piece. I mean, I don't know if I turn it like this can you see the large one? Oh yes yes thank you um and um and if i go this way you'll see a sculpture by villa which is an african italian lived all his life in africa but originally was born in italy great sculptor um from south africa behind him we have two george pembas which is one of the great uh, painters in south africa he's now dead then there's a series of collections from a young Mexican that was in the uh, Venice Biennale, a Colombian painter. The huge one that you see behind is um, a Portuguese, a African Portuguese um, artist. Uh, I'm drawing a blank in my old age. <laughs> well, you have so many pieces. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Bunga, his name is Bunga. Um, next to it is a large uh, drawing by William Kentridge. Um, then a sculpture on the other side uh, by a Morales, a Mexican, uh, mm -hmm. a Mexican painter and sculptor, and a young African woman that did her residency here in Miami. Uh, we loved her work, saw her again in South Africa. So it's a lot of... Um, South African around me in the family room. This is well, I'm in the family room now, which is sort of my hangout place. Um, and always surrounded by art, right? I mean, in, in every inch of this house, uh, in and out, uh, there's art. I really, really live with the art. The same happens in my office. Mm -hmm. Not only is my office filled with art, but I make all the people put art in their offices and in the hallways and everything. So we are constantly, I am constantly surrounded by the pieces that I love. And I know, I mean, of course, um, we, I think when we think of the Miami art world, you know, you're one of the, the people that we think of so much, but uh, you're also bringing your collection into the public realm with El Espacio 23. And I don't know if you can tell us a little bit about yeah. um, you know, Espacio 23 started as a large, you know, warehouse. Um, and uh, I think it's 30,000 square feet or something like that. I, I, I forget. Um, but it's a large warehouse <laughs> with 30 foot high ceilings. Um, and we were going to use it because, of course, you know, we have, other than all the pieces that we gave to the museum already, 
we have in what I call the personal collection before it goes to the museum, probably close to 2,000 pieces now. And I need it other than the ones that I'm hanging in place to store. So we got this place, but when we saw it, we said, wow, what a great place to look at my collection all the time and maybe to have the public, other than the pieces that have already gone to Pam, um, to have them here. So we redid the whole space as a, um, as a show pay, uh, place, as a gallery. Um, and we also have stored spaces there. Um, but now we're looking for another close by um, place just for storage. And it was very, very important because the museum is not my museum, of course, it's a public museum. So all the exhibits that they do are not at all dictated in any way by me, but by the professionals at the museum. And then they go to the, to the, uh, to the, um, to the museum uh, board committee uh, to approve uh, the exhibits. Um, so I have very little to do with that. Um, and I wanted a space where I could show what I wanted to show within my collection, right? From works from my collection. The first one that we did was very important to me because the uh, curator, uh, Jose Roca, uh, I think is one of the re real talents from Latin America. And, and both he and I have always been concerned with the social issues that art relates to or refers to or talks about. And I wanted that first, um, that first exhibition to the public to be about the artist as a social change agent. And uh, I think it was a great exhibit. He did a fabulous book. Um, and it talks about all the isms, you know, um, you know, capitalism, sexism, exploitation, uh, immigration, um, all the things that have to do with the injustices that we see in our society. And because of that, it involves a lot of works from minority Americans, you know, Latin, you know, American uh, that live in the U.S., Afro-American that live in the U.S., Hispanics that live in Latin America and their countries that talk about those issues, and of course, Africans that talk about the issues of imperialism and poverty and immigration in that continent. So it was a very meaningful uh, exhibition for me personally. Um, and now uh, we are working on the next one, which hopefully will be open um, for at least in November and then in December when Basel starts, which is going to be showing uh, contemporary uh, African art. And we have hired a uh, curator from South Africa, um, an expert on this that will be working with, you know, Patricia and Anelis, which are our two collection uh, curators, um, to do a large, probably, no, definitely the largest exhibition that Miami has ever seen on contemporary African art, maybe uh, one of the largest in the United States. Um, and we're very, very excited. We're very, very excited to show that collection because a lot of people think that we were, were still at what we did 10 years ago, which was strictly Latin American, which still holds a very significant part of my attention and my collecting. But we have really moved towards other areas uh, in a very aggressive way, particularly contemporary African art. Well, that's so exciting to sort of get this preview for what's coming up. Uh... I mean, I'm from Miami, so I'm always looking for a reason to, to come home, and certainly I'll have to come see the show. <laughs> we will definitely make it your while. And in the Spacio, as you probably know, we have studio space and three apartments. Um, the apartments will be by one curator, which is the one person curating the show, and then two artists uh, from Africa. Um, we are waiting for their confirmation um, they are going to be doing not only working here, but also going to be doing some incredible pieces of art, mixing um, sort of the, this melting pot that Miami is um, with their practice. And um, we're really very, very excited about it.
Yeah, that's so great that you can, um, you know, support the artists as well by bringing them over. And I think um, I just wanted to make mention of how else you support artists through the, the prizes that you have been giving away, especially since this past year. I know um, both the Jorge Perez Award and the Jorge and Darlene Perez Prize, they all went to Latinx and Puerto Rican artists, which was very exciting. Chat Travieso, Katia saint Hilaire, and Daniel Lind Ramos. Um, so I know uh, you have like a voracious global approach, but at the same time, you're still looking to um, some of these new voices as well. Yeah, and we're, we're right now shifted during these tough times, a huge portion of our family philanthropy um, to do just that, you know, to help individual artists in need in Miami and to help non-artistic nonprofits that are really being hit hard by this epidemic. Mm -hmm. um, I know I don't want to take up too much of your time, but maybe on sort of a, a lighter note, do you mind sharing with us uh, a recent purchase, a, a, new, a new piece that you have? Um, well, why don't I talk about two pieces, right? Totally different. <laughs> Um, and this is collecting, collecting and um, in the new way of collecting. So when we were with um, the Kentridge, um, he was actually doing a still life and a tree, two different ones. And uh, I love Kentridge, you know, I love him personally. We, we you know, we've developed a, a personal relationship. And I was blown away seeing him in his study uh, painting uh, one of these, I won't tell you which one yet, but it's one of those two. Uh, you'll still either see a still life or a large tree when you come to El Espacio next time. Um, in addition to a gorgeous large sculpture um, of a camera. You know, camera is very important in country just because right. a lot of his work is video, movies, right? And, this, and, 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 the, and the drawings also become part of their movies. So we, we bought these great pieces from this from this visit. I'm very excited to seeing them personally. Um, and then going to, to uh, the, our, my Puerto Rican artist, which is Angel Otero, which I really have been following. You know, he had he just had in New York a big exhibit. Was it at the Bronx or, or at the, or uh, at, the, at Brooklyn? He, one of the two. Yeah, I think yeah. at Bronx. Yeah. Yeah, I think at Bronx. Um, and he's doing some incredible new work. Um, and we got one of those, you know, and it's great because I'm talking to him about the work. I didn't tell him I was buying it, but he's telling me what it meant to him and, um, and, and the boat when he was fishing and so forth, because he's bringing some figurative elements now to his work, uh, which I think is very exciting. Um, so those are the two recent, all my art is so personal, you know, and they all have personal stories, you know, um, one of the things where I turned not just from Latin American art, but to, to what I call living art, which is, you know, pieces by artists that I can actually call on the phone and say, hey, what you doing, you know? And why did you paint this? And why did you use this tone? Or why did you use that motif? Um, it's so wonderful when you can hear directly from the artist, you know, what inspired them and what made them draw, paint, sculpt, install, video, photograph, any particular piece. So, so those are the ones that are in my mind right now. And I'm going to be very excited for the next month as they uh, get, get shipped over here. That's super exciting. And it's, I mean, it's always wonderful to hear, you know, the art goes on. <laughs> art goes on. Absolutely. Despite, I know some artists are joking that they've been ready for this in a way because they're used to their home studio practice. So, so, so looking, collecting for collectors, whenever they hear, there are struggling artists, particularly in developed countries like South Africa and Cuba, um, that really, really are in need of help. And what we've also done is we're getting the galleries and some of them, you don't even have galleries, but are very good to send us, you know, uh, close ups of their art and so forth. And as much as we can, when we like the pieces and so forth, we buy and, and a add to the collection and help them out at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 
Thank you so much. I know um, we don't want to take up too much of your time. If you have any departing words, otherwise this was such a, a great sort of entry into the mind of what's happening with you and your collection right now. Well, my, my words are the same for everybody. Stay safe. <laughs> Thank you. You as well. Thanks Bye. for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.